hi welcome to my channel today i have another theatre vlog for you so today i am going to the matinee of the commitments at the opera house in manchester i've never seen this show before so i'm really looking forward to it i'm sat in the circle today i can't remember how much i paid i think i paid about 25 pounds for my ticket so yeah i'm really looking forward to the show my husband lawrence is actually going uh tonight to see the show because uh, we couldn't go together because we need to watch the kids so he's going tonight i'm going this afternoon and yeah i'm really looking forward to it obviously I'll, if there's any merch i'll show you but i'm not sure if there's merch for this show so obviously i will review the show for you once i get home and yeah i hope you enjoy this little vlog i'll probably get back to you now once i am at the tram station because we wanna we wanna yeah we just wanna have fun the trunk's full of wine we're gonna stay up have the time of our lives the night is in young don't need anybody else we came to party all night long and we don't need no chaperone we don't need nobody's attention yeah we just wanna Hi, so it's now quarter to, I've just arrived in town, just got off the tram at St. Peter's Square. We're just about to walk up to the first now, so get there two, hopefully, and then yeah, get back to you once we're at the theatre. Also, it's super busy in town today because there's loads of different events on, so it's very, very busy. just arrived across the road from the opera house now it looks like it's having some work done on it there's all scaffolding up so there's no marquee we're gonna go see the commitments tonight so I just need to get across the road there and head in I think it's just gone two o'clock not too bad of a queue but yeah just waiting for this traffic to pass and then I can get across So I'm now in the circle, this is a view from the back of the circle, I'm just going to head to my seat, I'm on row G, seat 4.
So the show is now over it was really good i really enjoyed it i was very tired though but i really enjoyed it i need to rush home now because lawrence is coming to the evening showing it's five o'clock now and the evening is at half seven so i have to get home quick so he can come to the evening showing so i'm just at the tram stop now it's 11 minutes till the next one just missed one but hopefully i'll still get back in time so lawrence isn't late getting to his show so, fingers crossed. Hi, so I'm now back from seeing the commitment. So obviously I went to see the commitments at the Manchester Opera House. I went to the matinee showing which started at 2.30. Lawrence actually went to the evening showing which started at half seven. So I was sat in the circle. I was on row G, seat four. And my view from there was absolutely excellent. I don't think I've sat in that seat before, um, but the view was really, really good. Would definitely sit in there sit there again for the view however i felt very very squashed the seats in the circle are very close together 
and it was more or less a sold out show it was very very busy obviously the weather at the moment is very hot it's I think it's one of the hottest days so far this year today and um yeah it just was a bit uncomfortable with how close the seats are if you sit in the stalls the seats aren't as close together so you'll be a bit more comfortable uh, but yeah i just felt very very squashed um which sort of took away a bit of the enjoyment of the show i think because i just wasn't comfortable but view wise it was a very good seat so there wasn't any merch for this show um unless there was and it did sold out but they weren't selling any merch other than the house program so i picked up a program this was just £5.50 so this show is actually today was actually its last day it was on for a week but we've been on holiday for a week so today was the only day that we could actually go and see it and I've been meaning to see the commitments for years and for some reason I just kept missing it every time it was in Manchester so I'm really glad I've managed to actually catch it this time um, and see it so my seat cost £22.50 um, but I'm not sure how much of the seats around it were they all seem to be more expensive this seems to be one seat on its own that seems to be cheaper than the rest I'm not sure why all the rest were about £30 um, so I don't know if it was a mistake on how much that seat would, should have been but I only paid £22.50 for that seat which I didn't think was too bad Lawrence he was sat in the stalls I think he was on let me just check so he was sat on row Y, seat one, and he paid £34 for his ticket. And actually, I think my view was better than his view. Um, so it just depends if you like sitting in the stalls. And I do usually like sitting in the stalls, but looking at his view and my view, I do think my view was a little bit better than his view. So I'll just tell you a little bit about the story of the commitments. To be honest, there isn't much of a story to this show. It's a very, very basic story. Um, it's set in Ireland, uh, in Dublin, and it's about a group of people setting up a band to play soul music. So there's a lot of really good songs in, in this show. Uh, it is a jukebox musical. Um, so it's all popular songs that have been in the charts. So it features songs such as Proud Mary, uh, You Keep Me Hanging On, Knocking On Wood, I'm a Midnight Mover, Tubular Bells, Moon River, I Want to Take You Higher, We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off. So there's loads of songs. Um, in this all quite popular songs and in fact the commitments is actually based on the movie the commitments actually i think the movie came first before the show i'm not quite sure but there is a movie i've never seen the movie i'll have to try and watch it and see what that's like but yeah like i said the story for this is very very simple it is basically um they get a band together they play all these songs so it's, it's more like going to like a concert of songs which is basically what most of the show is um there's actually the end is actually just 50 minutes of them playing songs um so the the actual story ends and then for 50 minutes after that they just play song after song in like a really long curtain call finale um which actually was really really fun i really enjoyed that but everyone was up on their feet dancing for the last 15 minutes of the show so that was really fun and enjoyable and i did enjoy it but like it is very lacking for me i'd only give this show three stars it was fun but there just wasn't enough of a story in it for me to enjoy it i like musicals with a good story um and yeah it just wasn't my favorite would i see it again i probably would go and see it again just to be honest i was so tired um we just got back off holiday yesterday and i was exhausted and i just felt really tired through the first half and um, probably didn't follow it very well so i would like to see it again to give it another chance because my husband absolutely loved it but he is probably a bit biased because this was set in dublin and he loved watching it because he loved hearing the dublin accents and 
um, some of the Irish slang and stuff so he really enjoyed it for that it was a bit of nostalgia for him because it said um, the set they sort of had like um, a, f a house sort of flat set up and it sort of set on like an Irish um, sort of like a council estate and it sort of reminded him of where he lived when he was younger and the flat that his mum used to live in and he used to visit so it sort of brought some back some memories for him so that's why he really enjoyed it in fact he's going to tell you a bit about uh, what he thought of it after I've done this bit he wants to just have a chat and say what he thought of it so the set for this wasn't actually too bad um they did have like the setup of like I said the, the council house the flat which was sort of on two stories that was quite good then they had um like a setup of like a bar um and yeah so I thought the the actual staging was pretty good the set also um the band uh the musicians are all part of the cast there are a few uh additional musicians that aren't part of the cast but they're all on stage there's no uh, orchestral pit or anything all the musicians are on the stage performance wise no one particularly stood out um for me as being like a standout performer they were all really good um all great singers and I enjoyed everyone's performance, I thought they were all really good. So I'll now just quickly go through the programme, show you what's in this. Okay, so this is the programme here. And I have to say, the quality of the Opera House and, and Palace programmes have definitely gone up. The paper in this is much thicker, it just feels a lot better. It feels a bit more like the Lowry programmes. Um, so. Yeah, I'm really glad about that because, yeah, they were getting pretty poor quality um, a while back and they had gone up by an extra 50 pence. So I think the quality now is much, much better than it was. So as usual, on the first page, you've got some information about upcoming shows to so the Palace and the Opera House. You then have a bit of information on the Opera House itself. Then you get onto your commitment information. So this is an article. The commitments are back. And that's just a bit about the original show and it being back. Then we have the cast biographies. So for our performance, we had James Deegan playing Deco. Uh, so he only plays Deco at certain performances. And at other performances, Ben Morris plays Deco. But I'm pretty sure it was James at our performance. So he has been in West Side Story. He's played Emma in Legally Bond. He's played Bill Sykes in Oliver. Um, so that's some of the things he's been in. We then had James Killeen as Jimmy. So he's been in 39 Step, uh, A Midsummer's Night's Dream and a few other productions as well. Then we had Nigel Pivaro playing Jimmy's Da and the Caretaker. So theatre productions he's been in, he's been in Withering Heights, What the Butler Saw, A Taste of Honey and a few other things as well. You then had Michael Mahoney as Outspan I'm just going to quickly go through these now because my camera battery is going to die. We then add Di Freeman as Derek. Ryan Kelly as Billy. Connor Lytton as Dean. Stuart Reed as Joey the Lips. Stephen O'Rain as James. Ciara Mackey as Imelda. Sarah Gardner as Bernie. Um, Eve Ketterman usually plays Natalie, but we had the understudy on for Natalie uh, for the afternoon show in. Uh, we then have Ronnie York as Mar Marky is it, slash Ray. Joshua Barton played Dave slash Ensemble. Colm Gleason played Hot Press slash Ensemble. 
Ed Fort played Outstander that's Ensemble Alice Croft was Ensemble Callum Martin was Sap slash Ensemble and then we had Mary Ann Lynch who was on for Natalie she was the understudy um, who was on for Natalie We then have a production shot here. Cast list. Understudy list. Additional musicians and your creative team. Nice production shot there. Some more nice production shots. Got you additional musicians, uh, your creative team. You have your resident production team, production credits, and then you have the musical numbers which are in the show. So there's a lot of musical numbers in this show. So like I said before, you've got Proud Mary, You Keep Me Hanging On, Knock On Wood, I'm a Midnight Mover, What Becomes of the Broken Hearted, I Heard It Through the Grapevine, Chains of Fools, Reach Out, I'll Be There. I can't turn you loose. Think it's a thin line between love and hate. Save me. Satisfaction. Sign seed delivered. I'm yours. Papa was a rolling stone. Mr. Pitiful. Uptight. Mustang Sally. River Deep Mountain High. Treat her right. Land of a thousand dances. Try a little tenderness. Master and Servant, Brass in Pocket, All You Need Is Love, Night Train, Blue Monday, We Don't Have To Take Our Clothes Off, I Want To Take You Higher, Moon River, Don't You Want Me, Relax, I Want To Be Your Dog, Whiskey In The Jar, Tubular Bells, Ruddy A Message To You, Bring It On Home and McDonald's Girl. So those are all the musical numbers. And then we just have some adverts for some upcoming shows. Like I said in the last one, I'm not sure why they show an advert for six because that has been sold out for months. So there's no tickets available for that, so they really do not need to be putting that in the adverts because you can't get tickets. Uh, a bit about the Ambassador Theatre Group. And that is the programme. Hello. Apparently I service blog for this one I am because I went to see this commitments tonight. I quite enjoy it. It was a Set in Dublin, hometown, all the Dublin accents and the slang, probably set himself in, quite enjoyed it, quite enjoyed the songs, that was pretty good, good bit of soul songs, so your 60s and your classics, but good um, fun with them too. The setting was pretty good, I have to give the setting a pretty good shout out, because probably looked like a Dublin castle estate, because Mind me, or when my mother lives in a council estate flat, I would go visit that flat. I can't remind me of that flat I did. So it was actually <coughs> with the whole setting was. It was, and the way they used it was pretty clever. So I'll try to give that I did. The characters, 
all pretty good. Uh, they all pretty stood over me as pretty good sales and uh, acting. I had one difference though. I think it was just one. There was people all talking, so I didn't hear fully over speaker at the start of who was playing on the study, who was replacing who. But I'll show you the one I had that was different. I think it was the same as Sarah in the afternoon. So I had who oh, playing Natalie. She was good, Sam. I liked her voice. She danced pretty well. She did the song she did. I was impressed with her. And then the lead singer, he had a pretty good voice. Pretty, really good to sing those Garth May songs and all, all those other songs. A lot of songs there that I listen to, I'm like, I quite like them. They quite, what I like with your soul songs are catchy. And a few references with your Dublin and you know what I was saying, South North Star. I go. I'm sure the wife will get. So I understood all that I did. Um, I like the guy with the bass guitars. What was his name? I played. Uh, Ospan. There you go. Michael Maroney. He was free. He was good. Then you had the manager. Very good performance by him. He wasn't seeing. There's a nice little gag where the pianist does the song after a big teen happens that so he does a little song. But he doesn't sing properly because his character can't sing. So it's quite funny. I have to give a good team because I'm pretty sure I, he was a deco I had. I'm pretty sure it was. I don't think it was Ben Morris. It, looked, it looks like him to me it did. James Deegan. He was definitely played up to the persona of that lead singer who's me, me, this is my band, I'm the spotlight. So, the story, I should say actually, centered around this band being formed by that Jimmy as a manager. And he gathers these different color characters around. It's a Dublin stage setting. And kind of the set. Go, start with them forming, doing well, and all that. Is. It's quite good with how the story's done. For me, I quite enjoyed the story. It flowed nicely. It did with your gags and your songs going to the songs. I kind of played with us, the audience, um, doing the sets when they were doing to uh, pretend to be in there pub or pretend to be in a club doing it, performing so I kind of use audience a bit as well for that to play along with to make it part of it so it was quite enjoyable I definitely would happily see that again but I say I said in stalls Y1 so I was like three rolls from the back but very good feel really I can't kind of play with the feel I was right on the edge so I was handedly I could stretch my legs on that I'll definitely go and see that again. And I used my photo when I went to see this, so it was well worth using my photo because a ticket would have been £27. But with my £25 photo, I only paid £12. But seeing it, I will pay that £27 and I'll be happy paying that because it's a good show, good songs. And the ending, I have, uh, we guess the, after the finishes the story does. And it does a little ombudsman of songs and it gets the crowd involved, really involved. You can get up, dance, sing on. It's a proper crack is there at the end, as a Irish would say. So I really enjoy the ending there. Really got up I didn't enjoy himself dancing and singing to some of those good songs. So for what I would give it out of the stars, I would give it five stars. So I give it five out of five. Home, probably I'm a bit biased with my home setting, but it's a story, it's quite good. The songs are great, the production, stage, all looks quite good and really believable. So, I would say it's very worth seeing. You'll have a good cracking of a night, you would really enjoy yourself. That's all for me, for my review, and the rest will be to Sarah. Toodaloo! 
so yeah i hope you have enjoyed this little vlog little theater vlog and review like i said i gave the show three stars it's just not my type of musical i prefer a musical with a bit more of a story to it and the story for this was very lacking for me um but it was an enjoyable night out i enjoyed all the music uh the cast was very talented um uh, really good uh singers and everything so i did enjoy it but it's just not a musical for me um so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this little theatre vlog. If you do enjoy theatre vlogs, please do consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell and be notified when my next theatre vlog and review goes up. We are heading to London in July and seeing a number of shows on the West End. We're seeing Wicked, Moulin Rouge, uh, Matilda, Tina Turner and Book of Mormon. So if you'd be interested in seeing any theatre vlogs and reviews for those shows, like I said, do subscribe and hit the notification bell. And you'll be notified as soon as those go up. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. If you have, please do give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.